Hi friends, this is Pastor Kathy. It's time for another Little White Lie. Today, I'm going to talk about objectivity. Objectivity is the concept of a neutral position. And I think it's a really appealing idea because if you can be objective, you don't have to take a position. You can stay removed, separate and remote from whatever concept or decision is being made. And it's a lie because there's no such thing as neutral. Well, there is in cars. I don't know if your parents would have shown you this, but a car has a reverse gear and a neutral gear and a drive gear. We know what reverse means. It means going backwards and drive means going forward, but neutral is the gear you put your car in if you need it towed. You put your car in neutral when, for instance, you drive your car down a mountain in a rainstorm at midnight and find yourself 100 yards down a muddy tractor trail and need help getting back up the mountain the next morning. Just a, for instance, and I put my car in neutral so that the towing machine could pull my car back up the hill to the road. Or you put your, you, you go to one of those hills that has a mysterious incline and you put your car in neutral and it creeps in strange ways seemingly away from gravity. But neutral is always going to go towards power or align with power. And that can feel safe because those with power will do everything in their power to tell you that the only good place is to align or side with them. But is that true? Or is that just what they want you to think? The powers of this world want you to think that it's possible to be objective but in reality, that's just taking the side of power. Archbishop Desmond Tutu said that if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. If an elephant has its foot on the tail of a mouse and you say that you are neutral, the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. So we have something that can help us recognize objectivity as a lie. It's our feelings. I want you to pause and think for a moment about the last big feeling you had. Maybe you were angry about not getting your way, or you were sad or hurting because you fell. This might be one of mine. I've got an awesome bruise on my knee from a big fall. Or you were happy, so very happy, because you were hugging a friend or visiting a family member or finally, getting that special dessert you've been asking about for over a week. Or you were frustrated because there was a complicated math problem or an unfamiliar word in your reading list that you just couldn't comprehend. Our feelings are important information for us to understand the world around us. And when we listen to our feelings, we can learn more about ourselves and the people we are with. Now, of course, you can ignore your feelings. We are often told that our feelings are silly or superfluous, which is a fancy word for redundant or unnecessary. But if I ignore my knee when it hurts, it won't heal as quickly. If I ignore when I am angry, then my anger might explode in a rage at someone who doesn't deserve it. We are called to hold each other's emotions as valuable and necessary forms of information and knowledge about one another. There's a gift in letting your guard down and allowing someone to see what you really feel. We can find big emotions in the Bible. Psalm 6 says, I'm worn out from groaning. Every night I drench my bed with tears. I soak my couch all the way through. We are always making decisions through the way that we see the world. And this is part of how we understand everything around us, the way we feel, what we've learned, where we've grown up, what we've been taught, how close or far from power we are. All these things influence what we think, which is why objectivity is one of our little white lies. Remember, your emotions are a gift from God. God feels with you. Peace be with y'all. Goodbye.